Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everyone. Uh, happy Europe Day. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, my name is Alexandra Dorca and I am the executive director of l'Alliance Française de Seattle. It is my very uh, pleasure to welcome everyone uh, on behalf of a great partnership uh, for a super and fun event uh, today with good pop-up uh, in Seattle and uh, uh, two local bakeries, uh, the French one, La Parisienne, uh, and Café Clutch, the German uh, bakery. So just a quick uh, introduction. Uh, the Alliance Française de Seattle was founded uh, in 1987. Uh, in, so it's a local nonprofit part of an 800 plus uh, network of Alliance Francaises around the world. Uh, we succeeded uh, the Cercle Francais, uh, so the French circle uh, 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 who was created at the beginning of the 20th century uh, in Seattle, so very, very long time ago. Uh, part of our mission is to promote the French language uh, so we offer classes for youth and adults um, since March 2020, 100% uh, online. And we also promote Francophone cultures. Uh, this is part of our uh, mission of organizing events uh, about cultural aspects, including, as you can see, gastronomy. Uh, we also are the major uh, French examination center in the Pacific Northwest. And we have many, many uh, local partners, including uh, uh, the Good Pop Up in Seattle. So uh, I will let Arabel talk about that. Thanks so much, Alexandra. And happy Europe Day to everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Um, we are so happy to have the chance to offer this event together with the Alliance Francaise and Alexandra and her wonderful team today. Um, just a little bit of background about the Goethe pop-up. We are part of Germany's Goethe Institute, which is quite similar to Alliance Francaise a Cultural and Language Institute that is active worldwide with a network of institutes, pop-ups and language centers, almost 100 countries around the world. And the Goethe pop-up, um, that's why the name is different than instead of a real Goethe Institute. We are a temporary branch of the Goethe Institute here in Seattle. And uh, we offer an opportunity also to engage with themes and questions relevant to um, contemporary German culture and society. We organize, as many of you know, a broad um, a range of events and we support projects and fields in the film, um, film, arts, theater, dance, music, literature, architecture, you name it, today food, which I'm very happy about. And we do also have a physical presence in form of an exhibition space in Capitol Hill in the Chop House Row that some of you might have already visited. Of course, these past 14 months, we've been um, completely closed, um, but our virtual program has been going on quite, uh, quite a lot of things that we put together. Um, but we have some exciting news to share that I will also mention at the very end of the event, we will be reopening our space next week by appointment. So we're very happy about that. With the Alliance Francaise, uh, we've been sharing a very deep friendship based basically since day one of our existence here in Seattle, which was in fall 2018. Um, and we hosted lots of wonderful events together. Some of you might have visited the lovely Christmas market that takes place usually every year. We had to skip, of course, 2020, but we had it two consecutive years before that at the um, beautiful Good Shepherd Center in Wallingford, which is also home to the Alliance Francaise. We also had a chance to celebrate Europe Day together in 2019 at the Goethe pop-up space. And that was part of the opening of a cartoon exhibit um, with cartoons from the German edition of Le Monde Diplomatique. And as you can see on the photo, I think that symbolizes our um, friendship very nicely. Uh, for this occasion, Alexandra and I and our teams were joined by the then Consul General of France, Emmanuel Le Brun Damien, and the then Deputy Consul General of Germany, Patrick Heinz. Um, and not only have our dignitaries changed since then, but I feel also the whole world has in a way. Um, so different how we celebrate Europe Day 2021. Uh, but the consistency, I have to say, lies not only in the ongoing deep friendship uh, between our two countries and organizations, but also in the pastries, because what you saw in the picture, that little cute heart, was actually baked by Kaffee Klatsch back then, two years ago. And as we say in Germany, Liebe geht durch den Magen, the way to someone's heart, I guess, is through their stomach. Um, so, um, but before I dive right into the culinary part of the event, I hand back to Alexandra, because I guess all of you might not know 
what is Europe Day actually about? What are we celebrating? So Europe Day uh, is held on uh, May 9th uh, every year. Uh, it's a pure coincidence that uh, uh, this year it's, you know, it's the same day with Mother's Day uh, in the United States of America. And uh, the date marks the uh, anniversary of uh, uh, the very historic Schumann Declaration. Uh, so Robert Schumann was the French foreign minister after World War II. Uh, and uh, at the speech in Paris uh, in 1950 on May 9th, uh, he had this idea to form a new political cooperation in Europe. Uh, which would make war between uh, Europeans' nation unthinkable. And at that time, um, uh, among the fund funding members uh, of what later became European Union, uh, uh, we had France, West Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. So uh, basically Europe Day uh, is uh, a day when we, in Europe and European Union, uh, uh, we are celebrating peace, and we always always remember or uh, of of the past. And so we want uh, this day to be a celebration of friendships, uh, friendship and and partnerships. And basically, this is exactly what we are doing here. Um, uh, with with Goethe and uh, the Goethe pop up and and the bakeries. Uh, so what uh, we'll do today, Arabelle? Yes, let me explain to you what you're up to today. I hope you, everyone has their uh, ingredients and everything ready. Um, today we have the pleasure of being joined by two of the iconic um, foreign Seattle-based bakeries, I would say. Um, it's the German bakery Café Klatsch, um, located in Lake City Way, and then the French bakery La Parisienne, located in Belltown. And uh, what they too have in common is that they're both um, small family businesses. They both moved abroad from France and from Germany, um, started uh, their businesses here and are really run by uh, the first and second generation of um, the family in Seattle and um, each of the families. And, and they will also have a chance to introduce themselves. But I think that's very lovely that they're so, they have a similar structure of their businesses um, and you both definitely have to visit them. And that brings me to the next part because what both of them will do is they each introduce you to some of their most loved traditional baked delicacy that it's typical for each of the countries. And each of the session will last around 30 minutes and show you the basic steps to prepare the pastry at home. And you can then finish baking it because of course the baking process would take longer than the actual um, time we have today. Um, but you can ask them questions um, through the chat box during the entire session and they will answer them live as they bake. We will ask the questions for you. So feel free to fire away um, in the chat with everything you want to know while the baking is going on. And please pay close attention and try your best at home because you can actually win a gift certi certificate to both of the bakeries, each worth a $100. So what we ask you is basically um, you bake your own dish, which would be either the Google Hoop or the Chouquette at home. You can also do both. And then you take a picture of your pastry creation and then you share it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Eurobake Seattle and make sure to tag um, Alliance Francaise um, and Goethe Pop-Up Seattle and we'll share the handles later in the chat and the winners will be announced this Wednesday, May 12th. So um, I think that's everything you needed to know. Um, we also share um, the instructions later today again in the chat on a slide so um, you have everything you know at a glance. For now I wish you good luck, viel Glück, bonne chance and um, with that I hand over to the first bakery which is Annette and Justus from Kaffee Klatsch. The floor is all yours. Yes. Hi, hi everyone. Oh, okay. Hi. Oh, there we go. Now it's showing up. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Aneta, and this is my son Eustus, and together we run Coffee Clutch Seattle. We've been in business for over 10 years. If you haven't visited us, please do so. We're up in uh, Lake City, and we're going to show you today how to make Shoko Google Hook. And it's actually quite easy. Uh, I think the hardest part of the Shoko Google Hook is how to pronounce it. So, um, the first thing 
is Google Hoof is made in a very specific type of pan. It's a bundt cake pan. And we have the pan here. We already buttered ours to get ready. And it looks like this. So we already have all the butter in there. And you can see the rills on the outside, how very distinct it is. Um, and these are traditionally used in Germany for Google Hoof, small ones. And there's also have big ones to make larger versions of the same thing. It's very important to butter those pans more than you want to butter it to make sure that you actually get the little sugar groups google hoops afterwards out of the pan if they get stuck um, it's very frustrating so put a lot of butter in and we use unsalted butter in the bakery so this is you now you're doing the mix okay so um i already measured out all my dry ingredients so i have the flour the cinnamon baking powder baking soda salt and the cocoa powder for the cocoa powder, we're using this kind. Um, it's a berry extra brut, but you don't have to do that. You can really use anything. And the sugar, lots of sugar. Yes, um, it seems like a lot of sugar, but um, the, the amounts and the okay. ingredients are <laughs> correct. For our wet ingredients, we have the oil, the canola oil with the vanilla together, the decaf espresso, which we got at Coffee Clutch. <laughs> um, but you can also use any kind of instant coffee um, espresso, and it doesn't have to be decaf. And we also have our buttermilk here. So all the wet ingredients now go together into one bowl. All right, you can put this all together. Oh. Dry ingredients, you want to use a whisk and mix it up first. Just like this, and then you can add the sugar in. It can all go together. The brown sugar tends to be a little bit clumpy, so you're trying to get the clumps a little bit smaller. You do not have to sift all the ingredients, especially brown sugar. Try to sift that, it's almost impossible. <laughs> the sugar Google hoof can also the the dough the batter you can also use to make um, actually a chocolate cake or little cupcakes. We've used it to make cupcakes, so it's very versatile. All right, so we mix all the dry ingredients together. Now I'm using the whisk just a little bit to get our wet ingredients all mixed up. When you use uh, the espresso, make sure it has cooled down. If you put really hot espresso into your eggs, you're going to cook the eggs and we definitely don't want to do that. All right, so now you have your wets and your dries and all you do is you pour the wets into the dries. I'm going to give this to my dishwasher right over there. Yeah, you just yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank it's always you. nice to have someone do your dishes. It's a lot more fun. You don't have to do your dishes. So now you're just um, combining the wets and the dries to a point where there's no more flour. You don't want to over mix this because we want the baking soda and the baking powder to remain active and do their job in the pans while they're baking and not so much in this bowl. And yes, please mix it by hand. Do it by hand. Do not use a, a mixer. It's not necessary. So while Annette is mixing that, I can tell you a little bit more about the history of the Gugelhof, which goes back um, a long time. The first written recipe is actually from 1581 by Max Ruppert. And it had raisins in it. And it was a little bit more like a Stollen in terms of the ingredients than what we're making here today. And um, it was popularized later by Emperor Franz Josef and uh, Marie Antoinette in France as well. So next, are you almost done with that? Almost. Okay, yeah. So Sugar Google Hoof has been around for a long time and there's more variants than we could possibly make in one day or even a year probably. All right, you see this is all combined yeah. now. And the pans over here. 
So this is an ice cream scoop that I use um, to portion it. You want to fill those pans about halfway full or depending how big you want the um, sugar Google hoop to be. If you want to make smaller portions, you just fill it a little less. And Annette, we have one question in the chat already. Is it um, natural cocoa powder or what type of? You can really use anything. It has to be unsweetened. And I have used to yeah, read I mean, it's what it says on the box. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just cocoa powder, 100%. That's all it is. Yeah. There's nothing else in there. And, and I this kind because it has a very strong cocoa flavor. So I really like that. Show the brand here. Ooh. And why do you use decaf coffee? Is there a reason for that? Probably children can eat it too and don't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure because some people think that kids shouldn't have any caffeine. And so we just decided at one point to use decaf that way. It's um, a pastry for everyone. And then we had another question in the chat. Where did the name Bund come from? So it's it's actually it's, it's disputed. Um, one of the origin stories is that the um, I, I don't know where Bund come from, but Gugelhof comes from the the hat that was worn in medieval times. So it's like a hat cake. Um, bunt, I think it's just a bunt pan form. That's the Americanization. I actually didn't look that up. Uh oh. I know. Didn't oh. do his research. I'm what a shame. I'm He's sure. doing it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Wikipedia has the answer. Just to Google that. it. <laughs> oh no, I can do that for you. So the recipe says it makes nine, and you know, depending how much you put in the pans, it's, we're just going to call it a day, right here. Here, we'll put this away. All right. So Bunt is a brand name. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's There's the Bunt, another. It's the Bunt Company. Another question they want to know if you sell the Google Hook at Happy Clutch. Yes, we do. Um, usually during the holidays, we we're selling them today. We're also selling them at the Capitol Hill Farmers Market today between eleven and three. We do take special orders if you order more than one. And um, yeah, it's, it's online too for home delivery. From that's New Day. right. We are part of a co-op. New Day Cooperative and work with them together and you can order it online and they deliver it on okay. Saturdays. So now let's get this in the oven. Exactly. So it's 325. Now keep in mind that our ovens are a lot stronger than uh, the normal house oven. So um, I think in the recipe we said 18 minutes here at um, Redware's. We only put it in for 13 minutes and then they're done. So. that part. While those are in the oven, I would like to show everybody how to make the ganache. It's really easy. And which markets did you say that you sell at? We're Just at Capitol Hill home? today and we're going to actually do a, be at the opening for the Columbia City Farmers Market oh, on Wednesday. Right. And we'll have some Google yeah. Hook for that as well. For the ganache, um, you have your chocolate chips, you have heavy cream, you um, get your heavy cream and your butter and your corn syrup to a boil. Once it boils, you pour it over the chocolate chips, let it sit for a moment, and then you stir it in until it becomes a very smooth um, ganache, which then you can pour over your
when they're done. Um, testing the doneness of the shokuguru after 13 minutes, we use a skewer and we just poke it right in the middle. And if there's nothing that sticks on the skewer, then you know they're done. So when it comes out clean, correct. Once it comes out, you want to let it sit, those pans, you want to let those sit for about five, six, seven minutes until you can actually touch the pans and then you want to turn them over so that they can come out easily. As if you let them cool in the pans, you will have a harder time getting them out. If you try to get them out super hot, you will not only burn yourself, but they might be too fragile and break. Can you see if that's boiling? We already made some ganache yeah, so I right. can show you. Okay, why don't you bring it over? All right, we're gonna pour over this um, heavy cream butter corn syrup mix. Um, sometimes people ask us, why is there corn syrup in there? The corn syrup keeps the chocolate from crystallizing and chunking up, and it's really only 60 grams. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a moment. Um, actually, I had um, a spoon somewhere. Maybe I can use the spatula. This yeah. One? Yeah, I can use that. All right, I'm just going to start mixing this now. Yummy. And you just do this until it gets smooth. Um, while I'm doing this, Eustace can show you how to take the Google hook out of the pants. I'm going to move, gonna move out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> so when the Google hook comes out, it looks looks like this here. You can see that. Um, and then sometimes you have to loosen it a little bit. But if you put enough butter in, you should really just be able to flip it over and pop the top off. Yep, just like that. And all six of them will come out. Look at them, they're like really right beautiful. There. And if you use very dark cocoa powder, that's how you get this almost yeah. black color for yeah. the shuku. I don't know if you can see that. And so then what we do from here is we pour the ganache over. That's the best part. And then ideally you eat it before it even cools down. You want me to get some out, out from the pot over there? Yeah. So we already made some ganache yesterday and heated it up today. And the ganache, this is a lot of ganache, probably more than you need. You can keep it in the fridge, I'm going to say easily a month. And, and then whenever you feel like it, you can just stick a big tablespoon in the ganache and just take a bite. Right. To warm up the ganache, you um, put a container in a water bath. Use this takes over this. So this is what it looks like. Camera where I'm going to show this. So this is what it looks like <laughs> when it's hot. It's very smooth and silky. You want to get it really, really hot, constantly stirring, um, so that it pours really easy. And then all you do is you start pouring it right over here. See how it's thin and it's nice. And then you decide how thick you want it on there. Or if you want to fill the center. I, I just think it's so beautiful. It's a shareable item. I feel it's really big and sometimes too much for one person. It's really good with just a little bit of unsweetened whipped cream on top. It doesn't really need to be refrigerated. It's very funny, you know, in Germany, it seems like nobody's refrigerating anything. And here in the United States, everything is refrigerated. So um, I guess it's, it's a cultural thing too. Look at that, I'm just gonna go all the way. Ooh. Where, where do you get the baking pan from? Or not, I mean, you probably, you have a professional one, but where could our viewers get the baking pan? So I got Goodwill, a lot of them. all of them actually at Goodwill, but you do, uh, you can get them on, on Amazon and there's a company that's called Nordic Ware, the where you can bun. get um, all the bun pans. Yeah. So Amazon really nowadays is the place where you can get almost everything. 
unfortunately. But yeah, go to go to Goodwill or Value Village in Seattle. Um, they usually have a few of them in the cookware section. Yeah, and they all come with different patterns, which is really interesting. And if you look for the bigger bun pans, uh, they have all sorts of patterns. It's very cool. But again, I cannot stress enough how much you have to butter these in order to get those back out. And I'm going to get a skewer so that we can test the other one. So this is the final product. Now you can go ahead and decorate it. Um, I would let this sit for a couple hours and cool down. The ganache will still remain um, kind of shiny, a little bit less. What we did for Mother's Day, you know, we made some um, sugar cookies and we decorate them with the cookies. So we put a crown up here and we put little hearts around it. And um, the well, mother's was one of them. Well, they're so wet. I think. <laughs> but you can just put it like this. It will not stick right now. Definitely not, but something like this. Or what I still want to do is um, I would like to um, put a big scoop of vanilla ice cream right in the middle here and then maybe even drizzle some caramel sauce on top. How's that sound? So this is the final product. Let me just get a skewer so that we get ready to um, show you what it looks like when it's done. And here's the ganache. Eustace has been doing this. I would still do a little <laughs> bit more. There's some clumps. If you uh, if your final product turns out and has clumps and you don't know what to do and you don't know how to get rid of them, you can just pour this whole thing through a sifter, and the, then uh, and the clumps will just stay in there and then it gets really really smooth. For the cookies that we made, um, these are just sugar cookie dough. It's sugar cookie dough. You can find that anywhere online. And then I just put a glaze on there. It's a lemon powder sugar glaze. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, cools and we're good to go. Yeah, we sell them for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, any kind of special Easter. occasion. Easter, I think we made yeah. them. Yeah, that's it. How many of these cookies did you actually bake uh, for this weekend? Oh, and, and how many Google Hoops? I would be curious. I saw on Instagram that there were quite a lot of Google Hoops. Not as many as last year. I was very disappointed last year. We made a lot. We had a lot of free orders this year. Yeah, it might be that maybe people can't see their mothers this year. I don't know. Last year, maybe they didn't still see them. So I think I made 60 Shoku Google Hoof, um, some more for online orders. And the cookies, I always make hundreds. <laughs> you know, it's like once you have the dough and the, the cutting out be easy and the decorating is actually kind of fun any of these things are really fun because they're not things we do every day so that makes it special let me get a skewer i'm gonna poke it so we have three minutes left on our oven time here for the google hooks that we're actually baking which means that if anyone's baking along this should be ready what in probably about eight or nine minutes i don't know if anyone's actually baking along today one thing I would like to stress when you bake, baking is very different than cooking. Cooking, you can improvise, you can throw a little bit more of this and a little bit more of this just to make it work. Uh, when you bake anything, it's chemistry. So you should get really as close as possible to the numbers given in a recipe if you want to have a successful bake. I guess that's uh, my, my tip for anybody is baking. Um, something goes wrong, don't go up, do it again. That's how we learn most of the things here. My background is actually not baking. Um, I was a nurse in Germany. I really miss that actually. Um, and I learned baking here. I mean, I always baked at home, but I really learned a lot here from, I have some good friends that taught me a lot of things. I had bakers bake for me, teaching me a lot. Eustace as well. Eustace has a degree in sociology. <laughs> and so, when he was done with college, I asked him if he wanted to join me. And he said, sure, why not? So, what do you say we make everyone jealous? Are you just going to Oh, it? yeah. <laughs> Do you want some too, Kendra? Oh, I sure do. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to cut right into one of these here. And don't worry, everyone that's baking them at home, you'll be able to do this real soon, just not quite yet. 
also if you have too many i mean this recipe makes at least nine um a lot of times you don't want to eat nine in one day you can freeze the you can freeze the sugar hook right away you just wrap them up put them in the freezer leave them in there and whenever you feel like it you pull one out the day before or even the same day i think you can microwave them and you have a sugar at your disposal. And actually, we also, and Eustace, we had a question earlier, and um, someone also asked if the um, the chocolate chips in the dough don't melt all the way, what's the best problem to solve it? Can they put it in a hot wa water bath to get them to melt? When you make the ganache? Yeah. Well, yeah. Brought your um, heavy cream to a boil, absolute boil, bubbly boil, and pour it right over, it should melt. Now, if it doesn't, yes, you could do a water bath and just give it a little bit more heat from the bottom. That would be helpful. Maybe if you're working in a, in a colder environment. It's, it's rather warm here in Red Quares. And then we have one more question. If you do not have the pans um, you just used, um, uh, how long, um, what does it say? And you just use batter in a cake pan. How long would you recommend for the bake time? Talking like a, like a large bunt cake pan or like a square like a sheet or, cake or pan a spring foam. or a spring foam. Yeah, I, I guess it depends always on you know how much batter you put into um, the form. You know if it's really thick, if you pour it in this deep, it's going to take a lot longer. Always uh, bake a little bit more on the conservative side. So let's just say start out with 15 minutes. Use that skewer. Always clean the skewer in between. And give it another five minutes and another five minutes until it's done. Um, this is springing. This is another. So one. baking in a form like this. This is a larger form. I would probably start out with twenty minutes at least, and then start using the skewer. And then just do five minute increments from there. Yeah. Um, until the skewer comes out clean from the thickest part. This one you have to butter really well. Okay, we're just. This is going to. Do you want to move the yeah, let's bring it over here. So we're going to take him. That's great, actually, that we have enough time that we can show you what it looks like. It's fantastic. We'll bring it over here. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. If you put too much um, batter in there, sometimes they collapse a little bit here. You can see that. So I'm just going to put that skewer right in there. It smells really good, doesn't it, Ken? Oh, it smells incredible. See, it comes out completely clean. Let's try this one right Let's here. Let's do the biggest one. I got a little out of control there. Huh? When I put it in. <laughs> also, yep. clean. clean this. Nothing on there. So this was 13 minutes. On ours. So now we're just going to let this sit for at least five minutes. And then we can let it sit right here. You can let it sit right here. Yeah, so it, I don't know. Does anybody have any other questions? I can talk a little bit more about uh, coffee clutch. So we offer a lot of breads. We have German style breads. We have American breads. We make burger buns. We started making bagels. We have hoagie rolls. We really You're have- just looking around to see what's I'm in the room. I'm just looking around. <laughs> uh, so every time someone approached us, especially restaurants, I said, hey, can you make us that? We're like, okay, we'll try it. And, and then we've been really successful with that. We, and uh, we encourage you to come in. We now have Ceramic Sunday because uh, during the pandemic, we didn't offer any silverware and any chinaware and anything. It was all to go. Now we're at 50% and every Sunday you can come in and get your cup and a real, uh, your coffee in a real cup on a real plate with a real fork and actually sit down and enjoy that, which is what we are all about at Coffee Clutch. And hopefully we will get back to that. And you know, the next time here, we'll have to show everyone how to make pretzels. Really That's right. Thing. Yeah. You're, our pretzels are famous. <laughs> <laughs> you can host a little Oktoberfest and then you show us how to make the, the pretzels next time. Um, Ilona also says in the chat, we love Kaffee Klatsch. We miss your pistachian schnecken. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess there's so the many Danish things. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's so many things. And, you know, we have a, a lack of employees. So if you know anybody who wants to work, <laughs> there are so many people that don't want to work. We are hiring. We need kitchen help. We need bakers. We need people in customer service. And then we can bring back the pistachio snack. And then we can bring back all the Danish product, all the laminated dose that we used to make. And there's also a question about how you order online for Saturday delivery. Is that on the website or do you call? It's, it's at rethinkinggroceries.coop. 
we can it's, maybe put uh, that in the chat. Yeah, I, we can put that in the chat. I can yeah. find it. Yes, it'll be in the chat. Great co-op, um, all producer owned. They also have a pickup location in the Maple Leaf area. And you can't get all of our products there, but you can get so much more. You can get, oh, there's no time. You can get flowers, you can get meats, you can get dairy, you can get Lebanese specialties. There's so many things uh, on that webpage. I highly encourage you to, to check it out. And they do have a delivery of $10, but again, all that money goes directly to the vendors. It's a mini Amazon owned by the vendors. Perfect. I saw Yusuf just, just uh, shared the um, the website address in the chat, so that's great. Um, also, you guys, if anyone wants to work at Coffee Clutch, feel free to reach out to Annette and Yusuf directly or to us at the pop up. We're happy to to be the uh, medium. Um, I also quickly wanted to point out, in case you were wondering, we have a live reporter on site today, Kendra, who um, most of you also know from the pop up. She's part of our team, and she's there with Annette and Yusuf and uh, was um, yeah accompanying the baking process. So thank you, Kendra, too. And thank you so much, Annette and Justus. We have cake. <laughs> <laughs> Let there be cake, yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. It's uh, This is actually really exciting. And if there's the de uh, demand, we could do this again, right? Yeah, for something else. We would love to, this is fun. You Before we are moving to La Parisienne, uh, there is one last question for Cafe Clutch. Is there a substitution for the buttermilk? Yes, just regular milk um, and a little bit of either vinegar or lemon juice, just like a, a teaspoon almost is plenty. And so then you sour. let and then you let that sit for maybe five or six minutes so that the milk can sour and then that can be used as a substitute for the buttermilk. Sounds amazing. Lekker. Very, very nice. Thank you too. Thank you so much. And yeah, unfortunately we are not there with you to eat the cake, <laughs> but we probably might want to drive. <laughs> Don't let Ken Kendra alone, you know? <laughs> uh, so thank you so much. We will uh, uh, switch to the uh, French uh, workshop, La Parisienne. So uh, bye. La Parisienne uh, will uh, present us uh, today how to make chouquettes. And actually I have a, a, a quick uh, you know, story to tell. Yesterday we welcomed um, Pamela Druckerman, who is uh, uh, an American journalist living in Paris. And uh, you know, there were plenty of questions among others food. And then she said something uh, yeah, everyone knows uh, here in the States, you know, like croissant. Uh, less, fewer people, they know what's chouquette and all the kids and the families, they are used to have their chouquette in the morning. So this is what we'll do today. Uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, so let, let's uh, start les chouquettes. Merci, Alexandra. Uh, so hi, everyone. Bonjour à hi. tous. Um, so happy Europe Day and happy Mercer's Day as well. So my name is Elise Morin uh, and this is our chef uh, Laurent. Uh, so we are here today representing La Parisienne. So this is, as uh, Alexandra said earlier, a uh, family owned business. So I am the daughter and my parents came in the US uh, in Seattle actually eight years ago now to open uh, this wonderful like French authentic uh, bakery. Uh, and we are located in uh, Belton in Seattle. So just next to Space Seedle. So on a Sunday, like <laughs> it's really nice to like be able to enjoy outside. And so we are just next to Space Needle. So uh, please <laughs> stop by to eat some wonderful pastries. Um, so we are really uh, authentic French pastries. All of the employees that we have um, are almost uh, speak French. As me, like I have the French accent, and uh, <laughs> it's everything goes with it. So French accent, uh, French uh, pastries. Um, so it's really authentic, like we can find in France. So I think that's what people are looking here in Seattle. It's to be able to find, like you know, really uh, authentic French pastries. Uh, so feel free to stop by, and we'll be happy to help you find uh, the perfect pastries. Um, so we're going to start um, today uh, with Laurent. So we're going to do the chouquettes. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about it and the history of the chouquette letter. 
forever. No, I think we can uh, start doing the shoe gets. So yeah, let's start it. Uh, hi everybody. So today we start for the shoe get, the, maybe the most popular uh, items in French, in the French bakery and also here in the La Parisian French bakery. So it's very easy recipe with uh, some process. So I think and I hope you follow the step and you do uh, you do it at home. And uh, so I scale already all the ingredients for a little bit of time. So inside I have uh, milk and water. I put in my pot. I scale the butter, some like uh, 100, 100 grams of butter. Yeah. So you guys can follow uh, based on the recipe that we gave you. Um, so we're just gonna follow as, as well um, this recipe. So I scale the sugar and the salt. So we start to boiling butter, sugar, salt, and uh, milk. Up. So we need to melt all, uh, all the butter need to be melted. So we're gonna wait just a few minutes. Uh, it's not gonna take like a long time. Uh, that's what uh, a good thing about the chouquettes is you can make it like uh, within one hour. You you have like fresh chouquette for your kids, especially it's Mother's Day today. So that's the perfect uh, activity to do with your kids. Um, I know like kids love chouquettes. Uh, they come. <laughs> we have many kids who come to the bakery and get a chouquette. Um, and then yeah, so. If you have kids, bring them at the bakery. We'll give them even a shuket for free because that's what we do for all of the kids just to make their day happy. Um, so yeah, so it's gonna melt over here. So uh, I, we, I have another story. You know, I have a five-year-old who was perfectly fluent in French when she was born in Seattle and then she switched to English. But the place where she always speaks French is uh, at La Parisienne because she knows if she speaks French, someone there will give her two chouquettes to go. Yeah, that's the that's what we do just to try to attract the kids to us. We just <laughs> give them chouquettes and we're sure they'll come back. And that's uh, what goes with the experience coming to La Parisienne is uh, being friendly and then uh, a chouquette doesn't hurt. So yeah, we just give chouquettes to the kids uh, definitely. So I think it's almost uh, done. Just want to fix, uh, I think the recipe we give uh, uh, we give you, uh, it's right uh, 45 chouquettes. Yes. Make 15. Yeah, so you're gonna make 15 chouquettes with the recipe that we gave you. And then, um, so we made some uh, in advance just before this event and we'll show you the final, um, <laughs> the final uh, project as well as other things, of course. So uh, now we have a, uh, Laurent, we have a question here. Uh, so uh, Pauline heard that bread flour is better for choux dessert, like eclair, because yes. it helps its structure. What do you think about this flour choice? The, uh, the bread flour. The bread flour. So yes, yes you can use uh, the bread flour. It's, uh, it's uh, up. I will stop because it's burning already. <laughs> so yes, uh, I never try and uh, it's, uh, with. Uh, with, uh, uh, so we did. We haven't tried with other flowers. Yeah. Um, so we take the bread flowers, a regular yeah. bread flour, Yes. So right now we, we use just a main for uh, use a purpose one for the flower. But I think to be clear, the the patache is the best options for it. That was the. Okay. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So when the butter is melted and, uh, and uh, it's boiling, so we add the flour, shift already. So I can I don't Yeah, know so um, I just want to add something. Yeah. Um, for the all of the recipe in France, uh, we have to shift the flour, right? Yes. For all the time, like there is no exception. So the chouquette is like the same. Um, so that's a really important step. And uh, it will help like the produce. Stuff. So when all is boiling, we add the flour. And now is a very important step. We need to dry. So the the, the flour need to uh, absorb yeah, absorb yeah. The, the milk or the liquid. Yeah. Yes. So actually, um, so we go down with the fire. Yeah. So you have to turn off everything or like a little bit of lard. Um, and like we're making the, the dough very dry right now. So you will have to like uh, mix it really hard. <laughs> uh, it's good because I cannot do it every time I try. It's like it takes for a, not too, too long, but it's really tiring for my arm. So, um, so it's good. Like this at the end. 
very so, strong, very, very heavy. It's uh, really interesting because the shuket itself, it's really like it's there's nothing inside, so it's just plain. Uh, but the dough like this is really heavy and um, yeah, it's from a big bowl. So I'm actually going to start and uh, talk a little bit about the history. Um, so it's really interesting because um, so actually the pastry chef of Catherine Medicis, uh, the queen uh, of France, Popolini uh, tried to do a uh, popolin cake, and that's actually based of the dough or dry dough. And then, um, so we can actually yep. move it. We move in the uh, another bowl. Yes. Yeah. So he was trying to make a popolin cake, and it's kind of like the similar to the patachou. So it it was called um, patachou because of the fire. Um, and then, um, so it actually became uh, the Patachou later on, uh, after 200 years, they changed the name. And uh, this is how we found the shikets. So after this step, when it's, uh, the dough is very dry, we add the eggs one by one. Uh, so we need to incorporate the eggs in the dough. It's what we make the structure of the Patachou. So, like the, so the process of the Patachou, the, the humidity in the oven, the steam go up and the eggs start to cook on the top. So it's what you can what is the process of the patachou, what is very light and uh, very hairy. Hairy, hairy inside. So I just start to add one egg. I will mix slowly and the eggs be incorporated inside. So this one, the patachou is very famous and uh, popular in France. Uh, with the same dough, we can make a chiquette, we can make uh, éclair, we can make chocolate éclair, we can make Paris breast, we can make uh, Saint Honoré. So yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it on the plate, but yeah, as, so as he said, um, with the patachou, so the uh, pastry shoe, we can make like different items um, that are over here for you guys. Um, so we can make different uh, pastries. Um, so like the eclair, uh, the Paris bread. So that's our two actually uh, really famous uh, items at the bakery. So this is the Paris bread. Um, it's uh, I think the best seller, or we call it like our signature because uh, we give a special touch to it, secret, so I'm not going to say it uh, or what it is. Uh, however, that's can, clearly the best seller, as well as the chocolate éclair over here, uh, or the éclair au chocolat uh, in French. Um, and um, so, yeah, we sell a lot of those uh, every day at the bakery. Um, and then, so we also have the chouquettes every day at the bakery. We make approximately like uh, almost like 150 shukets or something, 100 uh, shukets uh, per day. Um, and so it's super popular. We sell them like just by the piece. So as you will be able to say, they are like small shoe like this. But also we sell them by like uh, bags of six or 12 uh, because <laughs> the reasons we do that is if you eat one, you can eat like six and because it's so good. Um, so a lot of kids like it, but also like even adults, I think it's just the it's perfect snack. But like the problem is, yeah, when you eat one, you can eat like many more. <laughs> so I think uh, based uh, over here, we're mixing. So again, it's <laughs> you have to have like uh, yeah, really strong arm to be able to do that um, yeah. because it's really heavy and uh, dry, so it's yeah, not really light. So when you add the hangs, uh, the dough become uh, sticky. Will will become uh, sticky, very smooth. So I don't know if you can see like this. More at the beginning, some uh, yeah. So it was okay. The hangs uh, is uh, very important inside. Yes. So after that, we start. Uh, so the the patachou need to be uh, make and uh, come on, uh, and you have to put in on yes. the tray, um, like Directly. as a small shoe. No, I didn't make the patachou uh, one day before or something like this. We need to make to pipe and to bake some like on the same way. So like uh, yeah. very important. I, yep. Yeah, so uh, make sure if you want to do the shukets, you do all of the steps uh, like at the same time. Uh, it's not something that you can like um, refrigerate it and then come back to it the next day. Uh, and also it takes like, I think like 15 minutes to prepare and after in the oven 25 minutes. So like in 40, 40 minutes, you have like uh, really nice shukets for uh, a nice day. Yeah. So. So look at this. Can we can we use a kitchen aid mixer to mix the dough? 
you can uh, so with the quantity no, no need to use the mixer because uh, it's, uh, it's very small and uh, it's very easy to make by hand and but you can use the mixer uh, as well so not with the whisk with the paddle uh, never use the whisk so we can make with the mixer uh, as well that's for sure okay thank you so now i will start to piping so i take a piping bag with a nozzle so So that's like the that's gonna be like the more like difficult part of the recipe, I think. Um, especially like to hold the the, the pocket like he does. Uh, I've, I've, I learned that with my dad, but it's always like super weird to have like your hands in something. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna start like piping. I'm gonna try to uh, show you a little bit uh, better. So what he's gonna do over here. And then we'll start. So I take yeah. the pack or the oven to make this up. I stick the corner of the paper because in the oven uh, it can fly and uh, the chouquette is very light. So, so yeah, as yes. you can see, we put like butter under the paper because uh, in the oven we don't want the paper to go on the chouquettes. Um, it will damage the chouquettes. So. <laughs> we so. have another question, uh, Elise Laurent. What if the dough is a bit too li liquid? Uh, too much eggs, and this one is bad. <laughs> it's too late, <laughs> and uh, so yes, it's. Uh, if you think it's, we need to mix very well because uh, at the beginning, the dough and like you say, oh my god, I make a wrong way. But the eggs need to be a very nice incorporation inside. Uh, it's too liquid. Uh, it's close to we cannot use some like it's yeah. Better if it's a little bit too hard, some uh, too too liquid. It's better. Mm -hmm. if, and yeah. another question, what size and type of piping? Uh, like, uh, 18, uh, oh, I don't know. So 18, <laughs> uh, so it will be 18 millimeters? Uh, yes. So it's going to be 18 millimeters, I think, for the size of it, yeah. And um, so everything that we're using uh, today as like the pocket or, yeah, you can find everything on Amazon. Again, I don't want to like say you guys like go on Amazon, but that's the easy way to go, I guess even though I don't like to say that. Uh, but also like, um, yeah, you can find uh, that in many other shops as well. Yeah, so we start to piping. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yep. Yeah, I make a little bit of turn like this. Mm-hmm. And so as you guys uh, can see, probably uh, he's uh, doing it very slow and at the end he's trying to like go a little bit uh, faster just to uh, make sure it doesn't continue with the dough. Um, so that's kind of like the, <laughs> the artist um, part of it. However, um, I remember for uh, Valentine's Day, we used to make the chouquettes in hurt uh, shape. So you can do like many other shapes, uh, however the sugars are really like one. Um, and also um, we um, we can write like names as well. So I, I remember we used to, we had another, um, we had to write a name in sugar though. Uh, so you can do many different, different shapes. Um, and then also uh, you can uh, don't don't put them in the in the in the freezer or anything like that if you don't want to eat them the same day however maybe you can put like some um like cream or things like that and in this case yes you will be able to put it in the freezer and like it's going to be perfect so when it's put on the on the tray like this we put so a, can, can can they be uh, uh, do they need a lot of space in between them or yes, you can it's uh, in the oven uh, the steam go bigger. out and uh, and so we need a space because about the size of it's around the when it's back it's around one and one point five uh, bigger yeah bigger than this yeah okay yep. so after we take a uh, pear sugar so it's very uh, it's a sugar. Uh, uh, yep. Yep. Like this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just want to find a chocolate. So put everywhere on top of the pata shoe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's perfect. Uh, yeah. So 
we're going to put that in the oven. And as I said, we have like the final products that we'll be able to show you as well. So this guy, so make so sure they shoot kits uh, yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Yep. And also like, yeah. Yep, like this. Perfect. Yes, so we put uh, in the oven for 25 minutes at uh, 365 degrees Fahrenheit. So just put in the oven, and if you can keep the, the door of the oven a little bit open for the humidity, for the steam, ah. so it's better for the result. And uh, so what we do, then what we need to do. And uh, so I will put this one in the oven, and uh, we'll show you. Uh, yeah, the final yeah. products. Um, and then, so yeah, so we'll put that in the oven. And then, so make sure to, um, so when you're gonna make that at home, make sure after 25 minutes, maybe check before just in case. Uh, it's better, it's usually like light to like medium um, brown color kind of. Uh, after it depends how you like them. You can like cook them a little bit more or like cook them less. So it's different of like what you, what you prefer. Um, and then, so as I said, the shukets, we make them every day at the bakery. Uh, but as you know now, it's really easy to make at home. Um, so we'll show you the final yeah. products. And so then... after the 25 minutes around, up, it looks like this. Wow. So it's yeah. really... We have a, actually a question uh, 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 about that. Yeah. What, uh, what if we don't have the pearl sugar? Uh, if we don't have a pearl sugar, the best here we can find is the chocolate chips. We can make with the chocolate chips. Uh, because if you put the granulated sugar or something like this, it's just it's gonna melt. Yeah, melted and uh, caramelized on top. So it's not mm -hmm. the same result. Uh, so the best way is uh, chocolate chips or I don't know, some like uh, almond chips or something like this. But uh, yes. yeah, I mean, there is different alternatives. But I think, uh, yeah, definitely if you want to like have like similar sugar, like uh, the regular sugar won't work because it's gonna melt and it's gonna caramelize kind yeah. of on top. Uh, so, but I think maybe online you can like find some pearl sugar. Yeah. So up at the end when you open. Oh, yeah, that's up, very smooky, very. So compared very to like light. how heavy the yeah. cream oh. was, the dough was, no, it's really like yeah, it's empty basically. Yep. Um, but actually, when I see this, it reminds me of like the profitrol. I think like yep. everyone like knows the <laughs> the profitol. It's really known here, but also in France. Um, and then so it's like the same. Uh, it's the same base, uh, the patachou. However, there is ice cream in it, um, and also uh, so that's another thing that you can do and probably put them put it in the freezer as well, right? Um, so we'll show you. So if we make the same dough and we put nothing on, uh, on top, so we can make some like chocolate éclair. Uh, and after we can fill by the bottom here. So it's the same, same dough, same process, just the, the shape different. And after we can fill with a chocolate cream inside. Up. So it's mm. very easy. Yeah. Very, very popular. Yeah, this is like. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the first pastry we can sell here and in France. Some like chocolate eclair, pie breast. Mm -hmm. For all the French people, it's just. It's, it's just basic. Uh, basic yeah, pastry. it's the <laughs> basic of like the French pastries for sure. Um, so yeah, definitely. So we sell everything uh, online. Um, and also, yeah, so you can come to the bakery, you can have any of the chouquettes. We make also like uh, French bread. So everything is really made from, from scratch. So like bakers come in the morning at 2 a.m. to like make sure at 7 a.m. when we open the bakery, we have everything for the clients. Uh, so we have like French bread, we have like a lot of different type of croissant, chocolate croissant. Or pain au chocolat, should I say? Um, also, we have some like savory items. We have like sandwiches, um, and then, um, as I said, like we are now open uh, a little bit inside, so we have like a few tables. But also, we have outside seating. So, like with the nice like days coming up, um, so it's another thing that you guys can do. Um, so, or if you are just walking like by Space uh we are just next to it. Um, so you guys can uh, come and uh, we'll be happy to help you with anything. Um, and also I should say like, we're also like hiring right now. So as I said, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. So if you are interested in like learning about the French pastries, if you, uh, if you are passionate, yeah, if you want a French lesson. Um, so feel free like to email us and we'll be happy to uh, work with you. Um, and also, so you can find us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, 
uh, Twitter, um, and also you can, uh, we have a website that you can find online. Um, so we are open to a Monday uh, through Saturday. Uh, and then you can make uh, online orders, you can make online over the phone. And yeah, of course, you can come uh, at the bakery to uh, visit us um, for some authentic French pastries. Um, and yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Uh, we we have uh, we have someone here before yeah. we we close yeah um, so Pauline she said uh, my shoe never has been that perfect air cavity how do you do that I, I think because uh, uh, it's very important when you bake the oven still uh, closed uh, the process because what's the process of the pata shoe the the steam need to go out of the of the shoe and of the oven if you have too much humidity inside the oven, they go down. So like, uh, so it's too. Uh, we need the patation need to bake and dry at the end of the, of the cooking. Uh, so I think it's about the oven. It can be about the oven. Uh, if the door is not open, the humidity stay inside and um, just be soft. Everything and uh, I think it's the process. Uh, it's the most problem everybody have at home. Sometimes they just put in the oven and. And they just keep close, and the humidity can uh, go out. So uh, it's the most problem uh, we have uh, yeah. when people ask for this one. I think if you, this one is, is done, if this one is down, uh, can be about the if it's not too hot, if the butter is not melt very well with the milk and the water. But the most problem is about the oven. So yeah. I don't know if Pauline so, finds the answer or not. So, yep. Keep the door open a little bit, I guess. That's that's the tip that we should give you guys. Yeah. And there is another question. So maybe Alice, you want to speak about the workshops you were organizing before COVID, because someone yeah. would like to know how you make uh, this savory. So uh, when Laurent was showing uh, Les Eclairs and Paris Brest, uh, we had this question. So uh, you you know you might want to mention the, the workshops. Of course I will. Yeah, definitely. Actually, it reminds me of like uh, before moving in the US, uh, my dad was uh, giving uh, baking classes to Americans in France, actually. So we were in Paris and he did that for about 10 years. So and that's actually what brought us here in Seattle, uh, because I mean, my dad has always been like, you know, he we wanted to like go to the US since he was like 20, I think. However, my mom didn't want to. But uh, so yeah, he was uh, giving classes in Paris uh, to Americans uh, coming to France. And so we actually wanted to like do that here. Um, so we started, I think in 2019 at the, um, yeah, at the end of 2019, something like this, um, or 2018, I think, yeah, 2018. And then, so we used to do that uh, if we, I think it was once a month um, where we were like giving workshop on Sundays. Um, uh, and like making either eclairs or pari breast. Uh, we did, I think, I mini macarons. Yeah, that was like the most popular one, I think. Uh, but every month we had a different recipe. Um, and then, so we stopped due to COVID, unfortunately. Um, I think the last class was in March, 2020. Uh, February. February, yeah. Yeah, we did that together, actually. So yeah, that was the last one. And then we are hoping to like be able to do that again in the next few months. But like we prefer to like keep everything um, safe at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's something definitely that we're gonna do that in the future because that was a success, I guess, yeah. And thank you for that. And uh, we have another question about the oven. So. Do you mean, do you keep the oven open all uh, during uh, the baking? That's, or just that's just one day. Oh, so yeah. we just want to clarify uh, everything. Uh, just uh, you put some, uh, I don't know, one uh, paper or knife or yeah. something. Uh, it's very open, so like. Uh, so don't leave the door open completely, but you just leave like a little bit of space just like this. So maybe you can just put, uh, I don't know, Spoon, yeah, yeah, a spoon or like something like this. That way, just like uh, the hair will be able to like uh, leave the, the oven, I guess. But yeah, don't don't leave the door open completely. <laughs> no. Okay. Do we have other questions? Okay. And how long? No. All during. Yeah, Judith. Uh, so all during baking. So yeah. with the old one. Yeah. Yes, Judith. Yes, yes, yes. We can. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Judith, yes, all during baking, but not leave it wide open. 
Uh, no, just, just a, a little space, yeah. With a spoon, just a, with a spoon, you put the spoon and the you spatula. keep uh, yeah. Yes. Merci. Merci. <laughs> Merci. Merci tout le monde. Thanks. Merci à vous. Uh, oui, oui. So don't hesitate. So, uh, yeah. Oh, this is cruel. <laughs> Alexandra, you have to wait until next week to get it. <laughs> I have to wait till Monday, yeah. And then Monday morning we will <laughs> so just we line up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so don't hesitate, you know, all the uh, participants, don't hesitate if you have, uh, you have additional questions. Yeah. Uh, you can reach out uh, directly to the bakeries, uh, you know, if you need us to give you their information, uh, you can all, also uh, email either the Alliance Francaise uh, or the GERD pop-up. Uh, do not hesitate now that you saw what they are doing to, to visit them, to see exactly, uh, you know, what they are doing. If you are learning French or German, that's a perfect occasion to stop there and to practice uh, your languages. Uh, so it's been uh, an absolutely pleasure uh, to have you here, uh, everyone. Rosario said, love your cookies. Yeah, we too. <laughs> um, and I will just take a couple of minutes because, uh, um, and then Ahabel will do the same. Um, we actually uh, uh, do have at L'Alliance Francaise, in the COVID uh, context, we started a cooking club uh, and they meet uh, every now and then on Fridays. You can find the date uh, uh, on our website, afseattle.org under events. Uh, the next one will be uh, at the beginning of June, uh, on Friday, June 4th. Uh, they were doing uh, mousse au chocolat. Uh, so they are meeting with one, one of our instructor, uh, instructors. So it's a mix of baking and uh, learning French. And then uh, on um, May, is it May, Diane? No, it's June 26th, 23rd, sorry. We will have a meeting with uh, Susan uh, Loomis, who's a chef and a journalist, American, living in Paris. Uh, it will be uh, in English, so the dates uh, and the details of the event will be published soon. Um, and do not forget something very, you know, uh, uh, it was a, a great success, the happy hours that we have in French, they are open to all. It's much easier, it's, it, they happen every other uh, Friday. Uh, it's much easier to speak French uh, when sharing a, a glass of wine. Uh, so basically food and wine, you know, opens all the doors to the subjunctive and uh, uh, the verb tenses. Um, so this is about us. Arabel, do you want to share your next events? Yes. Um, and yeah, first of all, also, thank you so much, uh, everyone. But yeah, we do have, as I mentioned in my welcome remarks, um, we have an exciting um, reopening uh, lined up. So as um, some of you might know, um, the second Thursday of the month is always Capitol Hill Art Walk. It was sort of on on a hiatus uh, this past 14 months, but we will um, reopen this Thursday from five till eight. Um, you can go on our website and I'll share the link in a bit um, so that you see there it is. And um, you can go on our website. So we'll um, actually show a photo exhibition called Berlin Wonderland that we were supposed to open in March, 2020. So it was hanging in our pop-up space all this time, very sad, waiting for all of you to come and see it. So now is finally the time on Thursday. And then if you click on that link, you also see a, a little like um, booking button where you can book your private appointment sort of. So um, always feel free also to reach out to us directly um, through our email address. Um, and we'll make sure to, um, to meet you at the pop-up space. Um, the exhibition is about the wild years in Berlin right after the wall fell. It's a beautiful black and white photo exhibit 
of all the spaces that artists occupied right after the wall came down and Berlin Mitte was especially like there were so many abandoned buildings. So the artists went in and squatted them and did like wonderful artwork installations outside. So um, these photos show that. And the wonderful thing is you can actually take a piece of Berlin Wonderland home with you because we will do a silent auction. Um, so you can bid on everything um, that you see at the pop up. Um, and then by May 29th, uh, when the exhibit is over, um, we'll notify you if you got the highest bid and all benefits proceed the Asian counseling and referral service. So this is your chance um, yeah, to take a photo home and also support the community. And you can find everything in the chat. We also continue, of course, virtual programming. We're not ready yet to do all in-person events. So please check our website or follow us on um, Instagram and Facebook to stay up to date on everything we have um, to offer. And yeah, I just wanna quickly say, a big, big thank you, danke, merci to our bakeries, um, Annette and Justus and Elise and Laurent. This was wonderful. Um, thank you also, Alexandra and Dion, for putting all of this together. Thank you to Kendra for being our live reporter on site. And then, of course, thank you, our audience, for joining um, us today on this special day, Mother's Day and Europe Day. And um, I wish all of you a great afternoon. And maybe just before we close, we uh, just to a reminder. So for the contest, uh, the deadline uh, is next Wednesday. Here it is, May 12th. So, so please use the hashtag Eurobake Seattle and please tag AF Seattle and Good Seattle so that we can see the pictures. Uh, you can do both. You can try uh, the French one or the German one, and uh, uh, we will announce the the winners uh, on Wednesday. So we will get in touch with you. Do not hesitate, of course, to follow up or uh, AF Seattle or Good Seattle on Instagram, Facebook. Perfect. And I think if we get all your pictures by, let's say, May 11th, because there was a question in the chat, well, good. So we'll sit together uh, virtually at the end of the day on May 11th and, um, and decide uh, what pastry looked most appealing. And then we let you know by May 12th. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Happy Europe Day. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, stay safe. Let's uh, stay in touch. Uh, à bientôt. Au revoir. Bye, Merci. Goodbye. Merci tout le monde. Au revoir.